Hey everyone, welcome back to Liz from DIY. In today's video, I'm super excited to share with you some Dollar Tree DIYs that are Pottery Barn inspired. I love some of the things that they have at Pottery Barn, but they are on the pricey side. If I can recreate something that looks just as good as the Pottery Barn piece, I'm all in. So this first thing that I'm going to be making are these painted letters that I saw on Pottery Barn's website. And when I saw these, I thought they were super cute, but I also felt like I could totally do this. And when I was getting some supplies at Hobby Lobby, I also found something similar that they had like on one of their end caps. So I knew this was a popular project that I needed to do. So the first thing that I grabbed was a black frame from Dollar Tree. And the frame that I got was a little bit bigger than like an eight by 10 frame, but with the paper I was going to be using, it worked out well. So I just removed all of the contents to this frame and keeping the backing piece. Next, I grabbed a piece of tan scrapbook paper from my scrapbooking supplies. You could get any color, do any kind of paper. This was just one I had on hand. And then I took the back to my frame and used that as a template to cut out my scrapbooking paper. Now for the letters, I'm going to be using these eight inch letters that I picked up at Joann's. I think they have them on Amazon as well, but I'm just using the one that has F for Fenwick and I'm going to put it down on my scrapbook paper and then I'm using painter's tape around the edges just to hold it in place. And then I'll be using ink by Waverly to stencil in my letters. Now, once I pull off the letters, I don't like having those lines in between the letters. That's just my personal preference. So I like to go back in and fill in those lines. And also if I have any bubbles around the edges, I'll just try to smooth those out as best I can. Also, I just did one coat of the paint. Now in the Pottery Barn picture, they did some distressing on the edges. So I did the same thing. I just took a little bit of paint on my brush and I went around the edges, pulling the paint off and just distressing it so it had that worn look around the edge. And then from there, I just let that completely dry and then added it back in my frame. So the only supplies that I picked up for this project was the frame. So for a dollar, I have a Pottery Barn inspired piece and I think it looks great. Okay, so this next project are these spackle planters. And I've been seeing all these different like textured planters everywhere. So I did a project back in the summer where I actually put spackling on terracotta pots and added, you know, some paint in with it. And I'll link that video down in the description box if you're interested. And I love the way that turned out. So I wanted to kind of take it up a notch and do some of the patterns that I've been seeing so often. I grabbed two pots at Dollar Tree when I was there and these are in the spring stuff and my store already had that out. You also want to pick up some kind of spackling. They have it at Dollar Tree. I already had some on hand, but you could always get it at Dollar Tree. I also grabbed this stencil at Walmart. It came in a pack of six and so I knew this was going to be perfect for my project. So what I did was I picked the stencils that I wanted to use. So I was going to use this kind of herringbone and also this geometric shape as well. I took the stencil and I used some painter's tape along the edges to hold it in place. Then I just had this little scraper tool that I had, you know, used for years in my kitchen. You could use any kind of scraper. And I just smoothed the spackling over my stencil. From there, I pulled it off and I let it dry. And in between, I washed off my stencils. Now I will say one of the hardest parts of this was just allowing the dry time because you can't really flip it over and do the other side without you know your side getting messed up. So I came back in once that was dried, added another coat. 
I also didn't have enough stencil on the top and bottom, so I had to realign my stencils and put it on the top and bottom. I would say the hardest part of this project for me was the fact that I was working on a surface that went around instead of flat. And so I would have areas where I'd have to like go back in and try to make a shape or just add in a little bit of spackling. Now I wanted a distressed look, but it was a little bit difficult doing that. And this project did take me a while to do. So once I completely got done with the spackling and everything had dried, I decided I wanted to add some paint to my project just to kind of make that spackling stand out more and have it be blended. So I used Elephant by Waverly and I just lightly brushed that over my pot. Then I decided that was too much for me. So I came back in with the white by Waverly and just kind of added that in over the top. In the end, I thought it turned out really cute and it kind of gave me that distressed planter look that I was going for. So Pottery Barn has a lot of macrame wall hangings on there and these are like around $200 which is just a little much for me. I thought I could scale it back a bit and make something really simple from Dollar Tree that anyone could do. Now you don't need to know fancy like macrame knots for this project. I'm just going to be doing simple knots. So don't be scared by this project. So what I picked up was one of these like wire um, wreath forms at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be clipping off all of the excess three uh, rings that I didn't want with my wire cutters. I'm just going to be keeping it to one ring. So the macrame thread that I'm gonna be using for this project, I picked up on Amazon, I'll link it down below for you. But what you wanna do is cut off some really long strips and you actually want them to be longer than you think you need. I actually did about 20 that were 10 feet long. And the reason you want them longer is because you're gonna double them up and you're also going to be tying knots in them so they shrink up quite a bit. So I did around 20 that were 10 feet long. So to attach them to my wire, you want to hang your loop up on a hanger or something where it's hanging on the wall so it's just easier to put it all together. Next, I'm just going to loop the string through the bottom with all of my 20 pieces of string. Next, I'm going to cover the remaining part of my wire. And to do that, all I did was just take it and hot glue it. And then I just wrapped it around slowly around the edges and hot gluing ever so often. This didn't take as long as I thought it would. And I wanted it just to have a covered appearance to it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my two pieces on the ends and I'm just going to simply tie knots in them and I'm gonna repeatedly tie knots and I'm gonna do this till it's about, I would say about five inches long. The reason I'm doing this is because I want it to connect with another piece. Okay. 
Then I'm gonna take a piece from the middle and do the exact same thing to it. I'm just going to tie knots in that piece over and over till it's the same length as my first piece that I tied knots in. And I'll repeat this on my other side. Next, I'm going to take that end piece and middle piece, pull them together and tie them in one big knot. And I'll do the same on the other side. Now I wanted my knot to look a little bit thicker, so I added in a little bit more string and tied some knots around it so that it had a little bit more string hanging down. Then I'll just cut off the ends of this top knot that I put in. For the bottom, I wanted to cut all of my pieces so that they were at an angle. So I just kind of angled my scissors in and gave it a little bit of a shape at the bottom. From there, I wanted my ends to be a little bit frayed. So I took the pieces of the string and pulled them apart. So my macrame wall hanging cost me a dollar plus the cost of my string and I have a really cute piece to put on my wall. If you guys like these Pottery Barn inspired Dollar Tree DIYs, make sure to give me a thumbs up so I know to do more like it in the future. If you're new here, make sure you're subscribed. I post three DIYs each week and you don't want to miss out on any of them. If you missed our last DIY, I'm going to link it here so you can go watch that next and I'll talk to you in our next one. Bye.